Hi, our today's topic is a hypothesis on equality of mean values. So this is also a very typical uh, type of uh, hypothesis testing problems. Uh, they are solved very often and so we will discuss today four cases of this uh, problem. And so the first is the situation when we have, a, we have two paired samples. So what do I mean saying uh, paired samples? This means that, so you, for example, you choose a random sample of people, let's say people, and you measure some numerical value for every person in your sample. And then you measure the same value for the same people, but under some other condition. So the, the most typical situation is that something is measured before and after, like weights of some people before and after a course of physical training or grades of uh, students before and after attending some, uh, some additional courses, uh, extra classes, or like, um, um, I don't know, spendings of people um, before and after uh, their salaries were increased and so on. So, Paired samples means that our observations are observations of the same objects. So two samples are observations of the same objects in different situations. So we can say that, so we have samples x1, xn and y1, yn. So as the objects are the same, then sample sizes are also the same. So number of x's is equal to the number of y's. And so, uh, so x's are measurements before and y's are measurements after. And we want to understand if the, whether the difference in the means of these samples is significant or not. So we are interested in mean values of mean value, value of the first sample of x's and mean value of y's. And so, for example, the aim of the physical training was to reduce weight. And so we are interested in whether the, the weights of these people reduced on average or not. So average weight after the training, is it less than uh, it was before or not? So, and the first uh, case we will discuss is the situation when we can make an additional assumption that both samples are normally distributed. So that uh, x's uh, follow normal distribution with parameters mu x and sigma and uh, the y's are also uh, distributed according to the normal distribution. So, um, this is usually just a standard assumption. So, as many of uh, numerical features we observe in our real life are normally distributed. So, uh, what is the hypothesis we are going to test in such a situation? So, the null hypothesis is that there is no difference. Sometimes they say that um, there can be a shift between two samples. So this difference between two mean values, mu x and mu y, uh, is sometimes called a shift. And so uh, the null hypothesis is hypothesis that there is no shift, that there is uh, no difference in means, or the difference is not significant, in other words, we can say so. And so the alternative hypothesis can be one of the following, so mu x more than mu y or mu x less than mu y or mu x not equal to mu y. So uh, this means that the, uh, the feature we are measuring, uh, so increased or decreased or simply there is a difference. So the 
test we use to test this hypothesis is called student's t-test, uh, more precisely student's t-test for paired samples. Uh, so it is named after uh, British mathematician uh, Gosset, so uh, student is his pseudonym, so most of his uh, mathematical scientific papers were published uh, with this pseudonym student. So that is why we, we know uh, him as student, his test as student's test, and his distribution as student's distribution. So, uh, how does this test work? Uh, so, the first step is to calculate differences between x's and y's. So, di is x y x i minus y i so difference between x and I, uh, x and y so and then we treat this sample of differences as a single sample so we we do all we um, we need to do if we test just a hypothesis on a mean value of a single sample here so we calculate uh, mean difference sample mean of differences d bar we calculate a sample variance for the sample of differences s d squared and then the test statistic depends on these two values on these two statistics so the test statistic is d bar times the square root of n divided by s d and so it was proved that uh, under null hypothesis the test statistic follows the um, student's distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So this is the distribution uh, you already know. We discussed uh, it uh, briefly when we dealt with the confidence intervals. So this is the same distribution as we had there. And so the, the quantiles of this distribution can be found in the same table. So uh, the configuration of critical and acceptance regions is a standard one. So it depends on the um, alternative hypothesis. So left-tailed or uh, right-tailed or two-tailed. And the as for the p-values, uh, the p-values can be calculated according to the standard formulas also, but uh, there, uh, there we use the CDF of this distribution, the CDF of the student's distribution with n minus 1 degree, uh, degrees of freedom. So the first example. Uh, there is a new training program designed for uh, 100 meter runners. And the results of nine runners were recorded uh, before and after completing this new training program. And so the question is, if this program effective in reducing uh, average time? So, and the, uh, the data is, so the first sample times before, so x is uh, 12.5, 9.6, 8.5, so these are times in seconds. 10, 11.3, uh, 9.9, um, 11.3, one more time, 10.6, uh, 10.5, and 12. And these are times after. The training program 12.3, 10, 9.8, 11, 9.9, nine, 11.4, uh, 10.3, 10.8, and 12.1. So the question is, if no, is the new program so is the program effective in 
reducing average time. So here we have two paired samples, before and after. And so what is the hypothesis we are asked to test? So, uh, so it is supposed that mu y is less than mu x, so that uh, average time after this training program is less than it was before. So, so we have two hypotheses. And so as the one we are asked to test is a composite hypothesis, then it will be an alternative one. So that mu x is more than, greater than mu y. mu y is less than mu x. And the null hypothesis is always the same. This is a hypothesis with equality. And let us now make an assumption that uh, our data is normally distributed. So let us say that xi follows normal distribution with parameters mu x and sigma squared and yi follows normal distribution with parameters mu y and sigma squared. So Uh, okay, uh, now we are to use the student's t-test for paired samples. So the first step is to find differences. Is to find differences. So let me do this somewhere here above our two samples. So. Uh, 12.5 minus 12.3 is 0 0.2 here, uh, minus 0 0.4 here, 0 0.2 here, 0 0.3 here, 0 here, minus 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3 and minus 0 0.1. So these numbers are these, are differences. Then we are to find the uh, mean difference. So this is 1 over 9 times sum of di's. And so this is 1 over 9 0 0.2 plus, uh, no, plus minus, plus minus 0 0.4 uh, plus 0 0.2, etc., up to minus 0 0.1. And so this is approximately. 0 0.011. So this is the sample mean. Then, uh, sample variance for these, for differences, for the sample of differences. So, um, so the best way to find manually to find the sample variance manually is to find uh, average square so to, to, to calculate this as average square mean square minus squared mean so you see that this is 1 over 9 times sum of squares so 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.4 squared plus so on minus 0 0.1 squared minus squared average, squared mean, 
0 0.011 squared. And this is approximately uh, 0 0.07725. This is the sample variance. And we actually need not the sample variance, but the sample standard deviation, so square root of sample variance. So this is SD squared, and SD is square root of this number, and this is approximately 0 0.257. So then, the test statistic. So test statistic is uh, d bar times square root of n divided by s d. So d bar is 0 0.011. n is 9. So the sample size and s d is 0 0.25. Seven. And so this is uh, approximately equal to 0 0.128. This is the observed value of the test statistic. Now we are to, to, to say what distribution T has under null hypothesis. So we do this, we say that under null hypothesis T follows student distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. n is 9, so with 8 degrees of freedom. So, as we have mm, the alternative hypothesis with more, greater sign, so then we have a right-sided, uh, right-sided, uh, right-tailed critical region. So this is the critical region. This is the acceptance region. And the for right-tailed, mm, uh, for right-tailed uh, tests, the border between uh, uh, the acceptance region and the critical region is the quantile of the level 1 minus alpha. Ah, we uh, haven't, uh, haven't chosen um, alpha yet. Let us choose the default value. Let alpha be 0 0.05. So in this case, this is the quantile of the level 1 minus alpha, or of the level 0 0.95. And according to the table, the quantile of the level 0 0.95 of the student's distribution with 8 degrees of freedom is equal to um, 1.86. And what we got, so our, our test statistic is 0 0.128. So, so we see that the test statistic is in the acceptance region. So we accept the null hypothesis. So T belongs to the acceptance region. Then we uh, so uh, we fail to reject each other. So H O is accepted. So and H O is that there is no difference that average time is the same before and after this training program. So the question was, is the program effective in reducing average time? And we say no. On the, at the significance level 0 0.05, it is not effective. So the final answer is no, 
it is not at the significance level of 0 0.05. And we see that uh, the test statistic is quite, quite far from the critical region. So not only in acceptance regions, in, in the acceptance region, but far from the border of the two regions. So that is why we can firmly accept so HO 